Hey everybody, Into Weapons back again with you today. Wanted to do a quick video on the differences between a Wasser 1063 and an NPAP AK-47. Uh, I've been receiving a lot of uh, questions regarding that on these videos as well as a couple private messages as far as what rifle is better, what rifle should I get. And I think the, uh, the question is definitely more applicable now uh, being with the market that the prices between the two rifles are very similar. In fact, they're almost exactly the same. So I thought I would do a quick tutorial on the, what I believe are the, the major differences between the two rifles. I'm obviously not an expert on it. If you guys have additional suggestions or things that you would like to add to the list, uh, you know, don't hesitate to throw a comment down below. I would certainly love to hear it. But in my opinion, I kind of what I did is just went through and looked at some of the differences between the two rifles. And what I want to do is try to help you guys make that decision. And uh, hopefully this tutorial will help some of you out. I really didn't find a whole lot else on the internet that kind of specified the differences between the two and uh, really made a clear, concise picture of something for somebody to be able to make a decision like that. So I did do a little bit of research and I came up with this sheet here where it's got, uh, I don't know if it's going to zoom in there or show, but uh, it's got, uh, I got it upside down. You know, the uh, things that are equal between the two, I got the uh, pros of the Wasser over here, the pros of the, uh, the NPAP over here, and the cons of the, the Wasser over here, and the cons of the MPAP over here. Um, obviously, I don't think you're going to be able to read this. What I'll try to do is make a copy of this and put it to my Facebook page. So if you guys want an actual uh, copy of this, feel free to jump out there and, and see if you can check that out. Uh, at least I'll attempt to put it out there. I can't guarantee it'll look that well. but. Uh, just by looking at the list, you can kind of tell that under the pro section here, there's a lot more pros for the NPAP than there are for the Wasser. And that's kind of the, the, the general consensus of what I've found here uh, between a lot of different reviews of the rifle and uh, just overall features and functionality of the rifle. It seems like the NPAP is um, generally the better way to go feature-wise. In my opinion, if you're looking for a... Um, and I'll just kind of give you the, my general synopsis here right away, but... Uh, if you're looking for a shit hit the fan go to rifle, you might want to consider the Wasser 1063, being that it is uh, more standard, it's easier to fix, it's a little bit lighter, um, and, and typically, again, just easier to fix and maintain, and uh, there's a lot more parts available for it on the aftermarket. If you're looking for a rifle that you just want to add to your collection, or you're a first time AK buyer, and you want uh, something that you're not really thinking about customizing, you just want something in your collection or something that you're able to shoot on a daily basis, and you really want to have a good, durable, solid firearm, I would go with the NPAP. Uh, it is, a, it is a, a better well, uh, better built, I should say, firearm, and we're going to go into some of those reasons. So uh, that's kind of my general synopsis, guys, and what we'll do is we'll kind of go right into the, the details of each of these rifles and show you some of the differences. Uh, what's equal about these rifles? And this is a Romanian Cougar Wasser 1063. It's a pretty standard uh, uh, standard uh, rifle that you'll find on, on most retailers. And over over here we have the Serbian Zastava NPAP Generation 2, which I believe the model number is M70B1. And uh, there is Generation 1 rifles out there, and you're able to tell the difference between those by uh, the Generation 1 has the dust cover rail mount here instead of the side rail mount, which I'll show you. It also has the um, front, front bulge trunnion, which is more common with the uh, RPK type rifles. Uh, you can see that up here. It bulges out, whereas this one does not. It's just a flat receiver like most AK-47s. So again, this is a Generation 2 and because of those reasons. Uh, the Wasser 1063 will run you about $540, so roughly $550. Uh, that's from Centerfire Systems as of 11-5-2013. Uh, which is this recording date, and uh, the Serbian Zastava is uh, going to run you about $599 currently at J&G sales. So there's about a $50 difference here, the impact being about $50 more. And uh, for $50, you're really getting a lot more features, and we're going to go into that in a little bit. Obviously, both calibered in 7.62 by 3.9. Both have a barrel length of 16 inches. The overall length of the Wasser is an inch shorter at 35 inches compared to the NPAP at 36 inches. And that really comes down just to this butt pad on the back of the uh, stack here. Um, the weight of the Wasser is 7.5 pounds, which is uh, 2 ounces shorter than the 7.7 .7 pounds of the uh, NPAP. Uh, the barrel twist rate between the two are exactly the same. They're 1 in 10. They both have a TAPCO G2 trigger group. They both accept all high cap uh, standard AK magazines. Um, they both have side rail scope mounts, which I'll show you here. There is a little bit of differences in the, um, the type that they use. And this is the Wasser 1063. And that has a pretty standard bracket on there for mounting optics. Uh, the NPAP, in comparison, has 
a little bit more of a narrow mount as you can see there but it's a little bit longer and I've been told and I'm not sure if this is uh, true or not I haven't verified it myself but I've been told that you're able to put SVD or PSL type rifles on this particular uh, rail mount whereas some of the other standard AK uh, side rail mounts don't work with that which I haven't again tested that on this rifle and or the Wasser so I really can't confirm that so there's a little bit of difference in that uh, but they both function in the same way <clears throat> they both have a threaded barrel Generally the Wasser 1063 you can buy it without a uh, muzzle brake on it or with a muzzle brake on it just depending on what retailer you get it from. Uh, if they don't come with a muzzle brake they'll come with a threaded muzzle no nonetheless. They'll have just a muzzle nut on the end of it. Uh, this one has, it did come with a uh, Tapco slant brake and that helps with the 922R compliance. Uh, the NPAP also came with this slant brake and that was pretty standard. Again Tapco, um, Tapco made. So they're both pretty standard there. They both come with cleaning rods. The Wasser 1063, generally that's an optional thing if they have it with the rifle or if they don't. They'll usually make note of that at the retailer, but generally the end paps will always come with it. Um, and both rifles have a front sling attachment. Now with the Wasser 1063, it's on the uh, front handguard bracket, as you can see there, which is a little bit different than what the uh, end pap has with their front bracket, which is actually part of the front gas system, as you can see there. So not, not much of a difference, uh, really more four or five inches of you know where it's actually placed on the rifle, but uh, definitely a difference nonetheless. Now what we're going to do is go into some of the pros of each of these rifles. And I guess I'll start with the Wasser and the pros on that side just because there's only five of them compared to the pros on the NPAP, which is about 12. Um, with the Wasser 1063, they always come with a bayonet lug, at, at least generally the examples that I've seen. And uh, if you're an AK fanatic like I am, having that, uh, that um, bayonet lug on there is, is definitely a plus. You like to have uh, your bayonets with your rifles, and it just adds to the overall cosmetic look of the rifle. And, you know, they're cool. So that's definitely a plus. The end paps do not come with that. This one does have one mainly because I added it on myself afterwards. I brought it to a gunsmith and had it one add. But otherwise, it would just be, a, um, it would be flat there. It wouldn't have that, that bayonet lug on there. They can be put on. I think it ran me about uh, 60 or $70. I can't remember exactly. I do have a uh, video out there on my channel of that install, so if you're interested in that, feel free to jump out there and check that out. Uh, so that's a different plus for the Wasser. Another plus for the Wasser is that it does have a chromed line barrel. Um, so and, that, and that's up for debate on a couple of things, on, and if it helps it or not. Uh, with the chrome line barrel, you're going to have a little bit more resistance to the corrosive ammo that you might be shooting. It'll actually hold up better to that. The NPAP just has a regular steel barrel, um, and, and what they're saying about the steel barrel is if it's not chrome lined, it generally will add a little bit more accuracy to the rifle, but it doesn't have the resistance to the corrosion that you would have with the chrome line barrels that the Wasser has. So there are a couple offsets on that, and I think generally people prefer to have the chrome line barrel just to have that uh, corrosion resistance. Uh, but it's certainly not that big of a deal, especially if you're not shooting corrosive ammo. The MPAP and the regular steel barrel will work just fine, and you'll actually find, again, that you'll have a little bit better accuracy. Um, the Wasser does come with a rear sling attachment, which I don't know if it's that big of a pro, but it, you know, in some eyes, in some people's eyes, having that rear sling attachment to already come with the rifle is a big thing, so there you go. Uh, the NPAP does not have a rear sling attachment. It only has the front, uh, but you would be able to you know, add one onto the grip or... Uh, there's, there's lots of different options out there for a rear sling attachment that you can add onto that rifle. Uh, the Wasser has a rear, rear tang for its stock, and I'll show you that here real quick on how the stock attaches on a Wasser. You see that there's a, a bolt right there with a rear tang that comes off the end of the receiver. That allows for a little bit more customization options uh, if you plan on doing uh, aftermarket stocks, things of that nature to this. There's just a lot more available for that standard type of um, add-on for this rifle. Whereas the NPAP is actually a little bit weird. It uh, doesn't, as you can see, have a rear tang there at all. It has a thicker type receiver, which we'll talk about, but because of that, um, it has no rear tang, and the, the actual stock is, is attached by a bolt that runs from the back here all the way through the stock to the, the back of the receiver here. And what that kind of sucks about is, is the fact that you're not able to customize that as much. It's a Yugo design and because of the thicker receiver and the way that the stock mounts on here without that rear tang, you just don't have as many options for customization on an aftermarket stock. There are some that will work, so you do have options, but just not as many. So that's definitely a plus for the Wasser. Again, that's just more customiza customization in being able to do that. 
Um, and that and that also falls into the front hand guards here, which um, the front hand guards are a little bit more standard. They have a standard size, so they're they're more common. Uh, they're easy. They're a little bit easier to customize. You can add on a lot more aftermarket parts to a Wasser than you're able to with a Yugo design. Again, because of the thicker receiver and just the overall design of the rifle is a little bit different. Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot available for front hand guards for the the end paps, but I know there are some out there. So that's all the, the Wasser pros that I was able to think of. What we'll do is jump right over into the uh, NPAP pros, and there's quite a few of them. There's 12 of them that I was able to think of. Um, the nice thing about the NPAP is that it has this ni nice teak wood furniture. Uh, it's finished, it's very well done, it's, it's quality, it looks nice. Compared to the regular, uh, what the, I guess this is, is more of a, a laminate plywood, a glorified plywood is what they call it for these rough stocks on these washers and the handguards on the washers. So um, the, the furniture difference is a huge difference and uh, having something that's finished and nice and um, it goes a long way with your rifle, especially if you're not planning on doing any customization to it. The overall fit and finish of the NPAP is much better than the Wasser 1063. And I'll give you an example of that on um, the tooling marks that you'll actually find here on the Wasser 1063. Uh, this is the first thing that kind of jumps out as far as fit and finish. You'll notice that right up here along the top on the uh, site there, you'll notice right along there that you'll be able to see, hopefully if it focuses, you'll be able to see tooling marks. You won't find any of those tooling marks on the NPAP whatsoever. They're clean, all the edges are smooth, there's no tooling marks at all, and that's uh, comparable for the whole rifle. There isn't anything that you'll find throughout the entire rifle, whereas the Wasser you'll find a lot of examples of tooling marks, machine marks, things of that nature that uh, just, again, go to the overall, um, the overall finish of the rifle. Um, the paint job on the Wasser is, is much less than the NPAP here. The, the finish on the NPAP is much better. It's got a smoother, more sheen to it. Uh, it's just overall better quality. I don't really know if there's a difference between the processes or not. I don't know that much about it, but again, I can just tell by looking at it, there's a definitely a, a finish difference between the two, and the NPAP has the, the head on that. Uh, a huge pro of the MPAP is the 1.5 millimeter thick receiver. So it does have that heavier receiver compared to the Wasser, which is only 1.0 millimeters thick. Um, that gives it a little bit more rigidity, generally tends to lead to more accuracy, uh, and then just overall durability. It will last a lot longer having that thicker type receiver. It does have an ergo pistol grip that comes right with it, and you can just take a look here between the two that uh, the uh, Wasser just kind of has a, a standard, what isn't a Bakelite, but looks like the standard Bakelite pistol, compared to the Ergo pistol that uh, is on the end cap here. And uh, not to say that this hard plastic Ergo pistol grip is the best in the world, but it does have finger grooves to it, so it does add a little bit more to the rifle than what the Wasser has to offer. Um, on the uh, end cap here, we also have the Enhanced Safety Selector, which the Wasser does not have, it just has a standard safety selector. And really the only difference there is the uh, notch that's cut out here for the the bolt hold open. So I can pull it back, pull up that safety selector, put the bolt into that latch, and now as you can see it's holding that uh, bolt open, which is a real nice feature, especially if you're at the range. And you can chamber the first round going that way. So that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, the Wasser 1063, you can actually upgrade that with the Krebs Custom Enhanced Safety Selector for about $55. And uh, in my opinion, that's a really awesome safety selector. It does a great job. It really adds a lot of function to the rifle. It's pretty cheap for what it is. Uh, with the Yugo, you can't do any kind of upgrades with it just because, again, that thicker receiver, the parts are a little bit more difficult to replace, and they're not standard like the Wasser is. So something to consider. Uh, the Yugo, uh, or I'm sorry, the PAP comes with uh, a Yugo last round hold open magazine, which is kind of a different design than what you'll find with a standard magazine. At least my end PAP came with this. I don't know if it's a standard offering at all retailers, but this is the Wasser magazine. This is the uh, PAP magazine. If I put them side to side, you'll notice that the follower on the Wasser magazine doesn't come up as far into the, the magazine body as the, the um, PAP. And what that actually allows is on the back of the the follower here, the bolt will come on the last round that it shot, it'll actually snag on the back of the follower here and it won't allow that bolt to go forward. And I'll uh, provide you an example of that here. If I pull it all the way back, look it was the last round fired, it'll actually stop there on that magazine. Now when I release the magazine it should come forward, just like that, because again the only thing that's holding that open is that magazine. 
So that's kind of an interesting feature. You can actually uh, modify a regular steel magazine to do that by removing or grinding down the tabs that hold this follower down. If it can come fully up, a lot of times you can modify that follower to uh, stop the bolt and um, provide you the same kind of feature. I don't personally recommend modifying your magazines. Uh, you're better off just letting it be as is. But that's definitely kind of a neat feature. The uh, Another number seven here for the pros on the NPAP is the uh, strength and dust cover locking system. And whereas uh, the Wasser, you just have the standard push button in the back here, pops it right up. Uh, it's pretty standard. They're uh, not known really for jumping around or, or moving or anything like that, but uh, obviously having only one button holding it together does uh, make for an opportunity for that to happen. The uh, NPAP here, and I'll have to go to the underside, actually has a button right here, as you can see. And this button you depress here, which allows you to unlock the dust cover and allow this uh, button to be pushed in and the dust cover to come off. That button also locks in the um, spring, spring system there, so that can't be removed either without pushing that button. So I'll go ahead and do this here real quick. I'm pushing in the button on this side, pushing in on the dust cover removal. It allows me to pull it up and off. Again, this button needs to be pushed again to allow that spring to come forward and unlock that and allow that to be removed as well. So kind of a neat system. It, it does hold it a little bit more in place than uh, what you'll find with a standard Wasser 1063. Uh, but ultimately, they do pretty much the same job. Um, you do have to depress the button in order for the uh, dust cover to be put back on, which makes it a little bit more difficult to maneuver. But um, again, that having that extra locking mechanism is a plus in my eyes. Uh, another big thing about the NPAP is that we do have the dimples on the receiver here compared to where we do not have dimples uh, for the Wasser 1063. And really the only purpose of these dimples is to eliminate magazine wobble. So when I put in this magazine, these dimples in the receiver are, are pushing into the receiver and it's locking up tight against the top of this magazine body, which allows that magazine not to wobble back and forth. Um, Wasser 1063s are notorious for magazine wobble, and I, you know I think a lot of the earlier models suffer more than these later models, which is what I have here. Uh, so I don't see a ton of it, but what you'll actually see is that Swasser doesn't have those dimples uh, pressed into the receiver. What they instead do is they weld some shims into the uh, inside of the receiver here, which kind of functions the same way, just not as well. Um, so it, it's just uh, another plus on the MPAP side to have that um, dimple system in there to prevent that magazine wobble. Uh, I did notice on the NPAP, and I don't really know a whole lot about this, but I noticed that there's an extra rivet on the back of the rear trun here on the NPAP compared to the Wasser. We only have one, two on the back here on the Wasser. We have one, two, three on the NPAP. Now, I don't know if that gives the uh, rear trun in here a little bit more stability, but I thought it was something worth uh, pointing out. Um, another thing on the NPAP is it does have a heavier front sight block, and what I'll try to do is give you guys an a a side-by-side -side comparison here to show you the difference, the Wasser being on the bottom, the NPAP being on the top. I hope you can see the difference there in the size of the, um, the front sight block. It is a bit bulkier on the NPAP, and it's a little bit wider as well, and I don't know if I can show that real well here with the angle that we have, but uh, it's just uh, something that I wanted to point out, being that it is a, just a bulkier overall unit, which makes it a little bit more durable. So uh, definitely worth pointing out. Um, the MPAP also has a chrome line bolt and bolt carrier. You'll notice with the Wasser 1063 that it has the blue bolt uh, carrier. And uh, you'll have to take my word for it because I don't want to disassemble the, the rifle completely now. But the bolt carrier and the bolt have the same finish. It's, it's blued. And that's pretty standard with an AK-47. Uh, whereas the NPAP actually has the um, supposedly chrome lined bolt carrier. As you can see, it almost gets a, a polished finish to it. It also runs right through to the um, chrome lined bolt and uh, the, the piston all the way through is all chrome lined. Uh, if it's not chrome lined, which it supposedly is, it's definitely polished and it makes for easy cleaning, uh, less resistance, less friction, which ultimately improves uh, accuracy and reliability. So definitely something that's uh, a plus on the NPAP. Wish it would come with a chrome lined barrel because that would really complete the package on this. Uh, one last thing was just uh, being that I just want to mention that's just more accurate, inherently accurate. It's got the no chrome line barrel, which again, points in that direction. It doesn't have the general cant that you'll find with uh, Wasser 1063s. That are, if you watch a tutorial on how to what to look for when you're buying a Wasser, you'll notice that uh, they talk a lot about cant in your rifle sights. And really what that means is that your sighting system here, as you look down the uh, rifle, 
either your, your front sight block will be left or it'll be right. It's just not perfectly aligned all the way down the center of your rifle. Wasters are known for that. Uh, this particular waster really doesn't have much of a cant at all, if any, so I really can't give you an example of that. But wasters are really known for that, whereas these, uh, these PAPs are not. They're very well built, they're very straight, everything is nice about them. Um, it's more rigid with the heavier receiver, being that, it, again, we're talking about accuracy. Having a more, more rigid receiver will have less flex and it'll provide better accuracy. Um, and then just overall, the build provides better tolerances, tighter tolerances on this uh, PAP. They built it better, the, the things fit together better, which inherently will make that more accurate as well. That's pretty much it, guys. Uh, one thing I did want to note is that the, uh, the Generation 1 PAPs, which again, this is a Generation 2, the Generation 1 PAPs were imported as a single stack, which makes it a smaller magwell opening in a single stack bolt. This caused a lot of feed issues during the conversion. It was caused during the conversion process when they changed it from a single stack to a double stack by dremeling out the uh, size of the magwell to accept a double stack magazine and changed the single stack bolt to a double stack bolt. Uh, those particular Generation 1 uh, rifles did have feeding issues. Um, the Generation 2, they kind of fixed those issues. If you do have a Generation 1 PAP, those, those types of issues are easily fixable by taking a Dremel tool yourself and just polishing or working on the feed ramp on the inside of the uh, front uh, trunnion there to allow a better push into the uh, around to be able to better push into the, the chamber itself. So that, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to fix that issue. It's not that big of a deal, but you might find that issue if you have a Generation 1 compared to a Generation 2. Uh, again, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys found this helpful, useful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you have any comments or feedback, definitely throw them down uh, in the comments section. Uh, and please like, share, subscribe. That definitely helps out the channel growing. Uh, and as always, I appreciate watching. Until next time, take it easy.